You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Ahead tonight, two earthquakes rocked southwestern Montana. Did you feel it? Details on who did. It's coming up. Plus, spring showers bring spring flooding across Montana. We'll show you some of the most severely impacted areas and what you can do to prepare. But first, could it be a Montana city's own Green New Deal? Missoula set to adopt an ambitious renewal energy plan. Missoula could be leading the way for the state of Montana. City leaders vow to go completely green by the year 2030. Kent Lutzen joins us now with how Missoula plans to do it. That's right, Andrea. There was some mixed emotions in the public comment portion of last night's vote on this resolution. However, Missoula City Council members voted in solidarity on this plan to become the first in Montana to move away from fossil fuels. This is a formal commitment to renewable electricity community-wide in the next 10 years. Many of those in opposition of this plan say they are being forced down a path with only one option. However, some on the City Council argue it actually allows for more choices. Missoula gets most of its electricity from Northwestern energy who is also paving a long-term plan for how they'll produce energy. The majority of our power comes from Northwest Energy and right now Northwest Energy is trying to get a bill through the legislature that will allow them to buy another 150 megawatts of coal power. That is moving in the exact opposite direction of what this resolution is trying to address. Missoula has now become one of 117 cities across the country to establish the 100% clean renewable energy plan in the next 10 years. Back to you Andrea. All right, Kent, thanks so much. So we're moving to weather now where a real emergency is about to play out across the United States Midwest, potentially leaving eastern Montana on the edge of its wrath. We want to show you a live look right now at Billings. Although it is April, you guys, and tranquil outside, if you're planning on hitting the roads, get ready for some overnight snowfall. It probably will impact your plan. So we're going to check with forecaster Bob McGuire a little bit later in the show to give you all the details on this spring snowstorm that is about to hit. Tonight, those in Cascade County prepare for spring flooding and you're being asked to prepare as well. The county is holding regular meetings as they plan for flooding. Some parts are already experiencing localized flooding and experts are monitoring snowpack data from long term forecasts. Regardless, people though should be taking steps now. Everybody can go onto the City County Health Department website and we have a whole section designated to this on what we're doing to prepare and it has weather maps on there, our moisture content, our soil content, our snowpack levels, all that information is on there available to the public and we, we strongly encourage everybody to get on there and look at it. And those in the Helena Valley also preparing for flooding, sand is available at the Lewis and Clark County Fairgrounds. Currently, people, though, are being asked to provide their own sandbags. An update out of Granite County. A washed out road has now been repaired after steady rain and snow melt. In the town of Hall, creeks and streams have flooded county roads both to the south and to the west. We'll take a look at this now. Lower Whittle Creek Road completely washed out. This road has been repaired. Crews working to get open for travel in that area. The road had water running beneath it, beneath that crack that you saw. Some roads east of Hall are still overflowing with water. Local ranchers are reporting small lakes covering their properties. Sandbags are available at the Granite County Road Departments in both Hall and Phillipsburg. Advisories are still in effect for the upper and lower Willow Creek and Douglas Creek. If you felt a little shake in southwestern Montana, well, you weren't alone. That's because two earthquakes shook Lima today. MTN's John Amy tells us how far the quakes were felt. A magnitude 4.4 earthquake interrupted the lunch hour about six miles northeast of Lima Tuesday. It was big enough that it was felt over parts of southwest Montana. Uh, there were a few reports from Butte from people feeling it. Um, I have to say it, we got a little shudder in this office. Though the quake was felt a long distance, it was still a relatively minor event. I've heard reports that there were some items knocked from walls in the town of Lima, which was pretty close to the epicenter. Uh, a couple other folks that I spoke to down in the, in the Lima era, area described it as a, a boom or an explosion, so um, very uh, loud and sudden, quite a startling event. 
This, is this quake occurred along a fairly active fault called the Centennial Tectonic Belt, but hasn't experienced a major quake in decades. Significant earth, the really significant earthquake that occurred in this zone was the 1983 Bora Peak, Idaho earthquake, which had a magnitude of 6.9, um, uh, resulted in two fatalities and chalice and caused significant damage. Now this roll records the Mackenzie Canyon seismograph station, which was only about 20 miles from the epicenter. And you can see the earthquake is recorded right here, and then the subsequent aftershocks. Now, this wasn't a large earthquake, but it was felt by some people all the way up here in Butte, Montana. My desk shook a little bit, and the cabinet right over there shook. And I went next door to my office mate, and I asked her if she had felt that, and she said yes. <laughs> in Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Glad there are no injuries in that. Well, the search is on tonight for a new music director for the Bozeman Symphony and more than 70 applicants already vying for the job. This comes after Matthew Savory's resignation in February. He faces allegations of bullying and sexual harassment. Savory served as the symphony's conductor for 25 years. But now it's looking to turn into a new chapter. The symphony wants to receive over 100 applicants. That new director will be appointed for the 2020 concert season. Lawmakers tackling the issue of sports betting at the Montana Legislature. MTN's Mike Dennison takes us to the debate. Last spring, the U.S. Supreme Court legalized sports betting nationwide, striking down a federal law that barred it in most states. Now, Montana is one of several states deciding whether to legalize it on a local level. You could bet on anything from season-long <laughs> championships to uh, daily sports to uh, actually in in game betting based on plays and so forth and this is across the board from every sport from football to tennis to NASCAR. State Senator Mark Blaisdell of Kalispell is sponsoring one of two bills to legalize sports betting in Montana. His would allow sports book operators to be licensed by the state and operate through kiosks at local taverns or other establishments that already have other legalized gambling. For the taverns, it's an exciting thing for them to be able to have another edition of a way to bring people into their establishments, maybe a different form of customer that they, they traditionally don't have. The other bill is from Democratic State Representative Ryan Lynch of Butte to allow the state lottery to arrange with its vendor to offer sports betting through machines also at existing casino outlets. Both Blaisdell and Lynx say the two forms can exist side by side and compete for business. It's one of those things where it's it's another it's another product that's offered through the lottery um, and it's a it's a thing that's happening already and so we might as well capture the revenue and legalize it. How much revenue? The state is only guessing at this point, but estimates that together the two proposals could bring in $2 million in annual tax revenue by 2021. This isn't a big cash boom to the state because the payoff is so much higher than most other gambling activities. Both bills are still alive and haven't faced much opposition so far. But I think it's an exciting time for Montana. There's a lot of different proposals that are being uh, debated up here, and yeah. we'll see what comes out in the final days. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison. MTN News. So both bills pass through at least one House hearing and they'll have a floor vote that's going to come up soon. We'll let you know when that happens. A uh, summon in Montana is lucky enough to get $1,000 a day for life, but they haven't come forward yet. The Montana Lottery sold a Lucky for Life winning ticket in Great Falls. That prize is $1,000 a day for life, estimated at $5.7 million total. The winner was drawn on April 8th. The odds of winning the prize are one in 30 million. New details tonight on what led to a massive Bozeman apartment fire that destroyed upscale lofts still under construction. That fire took place February 14th. You probably remember that. Now crews from fire agencies across the state will spend the next week investigating what led to the fire. Crews will send evidence to laboratories in Missoula and Seattle. Northwestern Energy crews were on scene today and Bozeman Fire says they found a minor gas leak while investigating. On a project this large, uh, as we all know, is a four-story building that ended up in the foundation. It's a slow, meticulous process of slowly digging through. We have a couple items of interest that we're looking for, uh, general origin of the fire and areas. Uh, we kind of put that together with videos received from squad cars, uh, surveillance cameras out in the area, 
and kind of areas of concern that we're just trying to find what was in that area and kind of build a map of what came from where. The developer says that he's eager to move forward and rebuild once the investigation is complete. Potholds are plaguing a busy road in downtown Bozeman. If you drive along this road, you know what we're talking about. Well, the city says that help is on the way. Cottonwood Road, west of downtown, a little bit of a bumpy ride, but the city plans to upgrade that road this summer anyway. The upgrade could cost $5 million, but drivers say it's a rough ride for sure. It hurts my teeth. Yeah. It's like, and then you cringe too, and you're like, slow down, but you still hit him. And you're like, I'm sorry, car. And you like just cry a bit inside. Oh yeah, that feeling that your car just rattles when you hit one. The city engineer says construction will continue through the summer and into the fall. Still to come on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news, a mass chaos is seen in Billings. Actually though, a way to train up first responders. We're going to take you to today's drill from a different angle. Plus, the Midwest is bracing for record amounts of snow. We told you about this at the top of the show. Bob McGuire tells us how Montana will feel the effects. It's right after the break.